in this problem, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to do all four operations as well as identify the domain. Okay. So the main important thing, guys, is we need to understand the operation. That's why I asked you guys to write these down. Because I understand the notation gets difficult. But if, if, if you guys have tried this, you realize what I'm actually asking you is really not that difficult. You know, you're just combining functions, right? You're just doing the simple four basic operations. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. Not to say that it's always easy, but the general question that I'm asking you to do is really not that difficult, right? Just add, subtract, multiply, divide. Um, however, there are times where this starts to get complicated, though, pretty quickly, especially once we get over to here, which I'll go over next. So anyways, all this is really saying us is for us to add f of x, which is x minus 2, plus add g of x, which is x squared minus 3x plus 2. Right? That's all it's really doing. Now, I recommend, guys, when you're replacing x minus 2 in for f of x, I like to put in parentheses. To me, in my brain, that just triggers that, oh, I replaced x minus 2 in for f of x. Right? Because all you're doing is f of x plus g of x. f of x plus g of x. Now, you just combine like terms. I can't combine anything with x squared. Then I have x plus a negative 3x is a negative 2x. And then I have negative 2 plus 2 is just 0. So I'm going to leave that out. Then I go and look at the domain. My domain. Is there any restrictions that I talked about for my domain on the graph? Is there any restrictions? Do I have anything in the denominator or anything under a radical? So guess what? As of right now, there's nothing for me to believe that my domain is going to be restricted at all. So it's going to be from negative infinity to infinity, or all real numbers. Okay, for, it does, Yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, the same thing. I prefer this method, though. But if you want to write all real numbers, as long as you understand <coughs> this works as well, or you know this, then that's OK. Um, f, minus, f minus g of x, again, it's really important to use parentheses. Because now, when you're doing subtraction, Everything about the sign matters, because I have to make sure I'm subtracting not just x squared, but I'm subtracting all of these values. So in reality, this is x. Or anyways, I don't have anything to subtract my x, so that's a negative x squared. Therefore, I have minus a negative 3x, which is a positive 3x. So therefore, I have x minus a negative 3x, right? Double negative, so it's 4x. And then here, I have negative 2 minus 2. So if you owe me $2 and you borrow two more dollars, you owe me $4. Again, let's go into our domain. Do I, again, have any restrictions on my domain that we've discussed? No. OK, done. The next thing is multiplication. Again, using your parentheses is very helpful. So what you guys can see here is you have a binomial times a trinomial. If you guys like using FOIL, that's perfectly fine. I have no problem with that. I told you I didn't like using, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, I, didn't, I started to like to use the box method for <coughs> radical expressions. But I like per, when, it's, when you're dealing with polynomials, I prefer to use the box method. You don't have to use the box method. Whatever you guys are comfortable with is perfectly fine with me. But I like the box method because it organizes everything very, very nicely. So now all I got to do is just multiply to find the area of each box. So I'll do this kind of rather quickly. x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 2x squared uh, plus 6x minus 4. And what's also nice about the box method is when, as long as you have your um, polynomials in descending order, you have like terms on the diagonal. So it's really easy to combine like terms because they're connected on the diagonal. So therefore, my answer here is going to be x cubed, negative 2x squared. So that's going to be negative 5x squared plus 8x minus 4. Yes? Again, let's find the domain. Is there any restrictions on this domain? No. So I'll write my domain over here. Domain, all real numbers. OK? But now we're going to get into something that's a little bit trickier. Um, so now we're going to do f of g of x. So in this case, I have my x minus 2 all over x squared minus 3x plus 2. 
Now, in this case, you guys can see, does this divide into that? No, right? This is a larger power, right? You can't have the x cubed does not divide into that. So therefore, that's not going to divide into. So we can't use long division or synthetic division or anything else. However, we can factor our denominator. And if you guys factor your denominator, you have x squared minus 3x plus 2. What two numbers multiply to give you 2, add to give you negative 3? So if I rewrite this in factored form, Okay, there's one, two things I want you guys to notice. First of all, before I simplify this fully, what two numbers make my denominator equal to 0? Plus 1. Right. So to do that, what you're going to do, if you guys remember I said, whenever you have a fraction, always set your denominator equal to 0. So this is my denominator. If I just set my denominator equal to 0, I can now apply the 0 product property. So I could say x equals 2 and x equals 1. That means when x equals 2 or x equals 1, my um, denominator is going to equal 0. Well, when my denominator equals 0, that's not going to be in my function. So therefore, my domain is going to be all real numbers such that x cannot equal 2 or 1. That's how I write my domain. I'm not done yet. I haven't simplified it yet. So I just want to make sure I write the domain before I simplify it. Because in my simplified version, my x minus 2 and my x minus 2, since my denominators are separated by multiplication, these divide out. And remember, there's always a 1 up there. You just don't like, you can't just like get rid of it. So therefore, your final simplified answer is 1 over x minus 1. Okay? That would be your simplified answer. So always look to simplify by doing factoring so forth. Um, do that. Yes? OK. Now let's do the next one. The next one. Yes, question. Um, if it wasn't factorable, would you have to use like long division? Well, well, you can't divide. So this would be simplified. You can't, you can't divide a larger. That's like saying, you know, 5 divides into 2. 5 doesn't divide into 2, right? You have to use decimals, right? Yeah, no, but like, so you, you got well, that's the same. This would be simplified. This would be it. Uh, you'd, well, to find the, oh, you find, to find the, to find the, the domain, yeah. the, you'd have to use like quadratic formula. I'll tell you, you're not going to have to do that. Okay. But that's what you technically would have to do. Um, oh, right, to, yeah, because if, if it's not factorable, then you'd have to use quadratic to solve to find the domain, mm -hmm. which you will not have to do in this class. Um, Pre-calculus, yes x squared minus 3x plus 2 divided by x minus 2. Now in this one, could we divide? Could we divide this one? Of course. We could use long division, right? It's also a binomial, so we could do synthetic division. But why do all that if we don't have to, correct? If we know that this is factorable, is it much easier just to say, oh, this is x minus 2 times x minus 1 all over x minus 2, these divide out. Therefore, my final answer is just x minus 1. Right? I didn't have to, I didn't have to do synthetic division to solve this. I, got, I, just, I just factored it and simplified. So that's why factoring can be helpful. Right? I know a lot of you guys don't like doing factoring, but it can make the problem a lot quicker. Now, real quickly, as far as your domain, uh, the domain for this problem is you have to go back to your original problem. So your domain, what was in my denominator? x minus 2. So the values that would make that 0 would be 2. So x, all real numbers except x cannot equal 2. OK? So um, shoot, how did I run out of time with this class? <laughs>